give me one sec and I'll set my slide up at the same time. All right, then. All right, Savia as well, okay. Okay, let's let's get to it. What to And all right, so let me know if you can see my screen. Yes, we can. All right. Um, it was lovely hearing the introduction from everybody. Um, it's good to see that everybody here is hungry for knowledge. And that's how you know that you're in the right community, right? Um, the, the good thing about community is fire, right? When there's firewood in the fire, the fire doesn't go out, right? So even if one person is going down, there's another person to recharge. And I love the front-end engineer, the full-stack engineer that says he just wanted to come and learn. Um, and everyone else has said the same thing. It's amazing to see. I hope that this session will be valuable for you. I know it will, um, but I want you to keep an open mind. It's going to be a very, very collaborative class, right? I want our energy to be high. So if your energy is not high yet, just you know, increase the increase the volume, <laughs> turn the knob up, right? So that we can have a great time. All right. So the emphasis here is successful, right? This session is not how to become a product manager. And it's not how to successfully, how to become a product manager successfully. It's how to become a successful product manager. So there's a difference between being a product manager and being a successful product manager. That's what one thing I want you to pick on this topic, right? Um, I'm not going to say much about me. I think all of that has been said. Um, the only thing I'll, I'll put here is my last line. I love writing, teaching, speaking, building products. Um, you can check out my LinkedIn. And um, I have this newsletter where I share um tips for people in growth not just product management um and it can help anyone in any industry so you can just check that out all right so this is a question for the house a question for the house um if you want to speak just go ahead and unmute yourself and speak it's fine what makes a product manager outstanding what is your view what do you think makes a product manager understand and um, outstanding anyone can go Okay. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. Um what I would say is that um a lot of things make a product manager outstanding, but one of them I know about is the ability for um a product manager to be able to understand all requirements of um what he or she is expected to do if okay. it's an application if it's a website or whatever they should understand all the requirements and how um it's supposed to um, affect both the the client that's the person building that application and how it's going to be how it's going to affect the customers they should mm. be able to um, agree on a center point on a very sweet spot where the product is not going to be um something that will be hard or difficult for customers to use at mm -hmm. the same time trying to meet the needs of the client so i think project, project uh, product managers they are at they are at a very critical point mm -hmm. in in every product because mm -hmm. they, they are the ones that really need to think about um, they even need to think about how developers are going to approach their problem solving Mm -hmm. and 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 they are the center point of every product uh, if a product wants to fail i think it's it all starts from product management it all starts from the product day so um i think they are they are the ones that um relates that brings all the ideas together and at the end of the day okay. um brings out life out of it so what would make you outstanding as a product manager is that ability to be able to to um be a good in being good standings with each um each stakeholder either the client or okay. the customer yeah awesome awesome okay yeah. tell us about to teach my class okay <laughs> good one good one 
Okay, um, Fumilayo. Fumilayo, you want to go? Oh, sorry. I was speaking. Good afternoon, everybody. So, what makes a product manager outstanding is when they make informed decision based on customers' feedback and data, and not on their own intuition or feelings. Right. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, everyone that spoke. All right. So, before I continue, I just want to say that some of the things I'm going to teach you guys today might be in the middle of conventional and unconventional stuff, right? I like to teach things from very, a very practical perspective than from a textbook perspective, right? There are some things that you hear from like when you read a textbook and everything sounds so corporate. I don't know if you, if you know what I mean, but people don't really like to tell you like some tips or tricks or tactics or real things that apply in the real world, right? So just a heads up that some things that you see here might not be things that you originally see when you when you try to check for successful product manager management tips and which is that is why i like this this um this particular topic so whether you're a new product manager or you're an existing product manager just uh, keep your eyes open and your mind open right just by a show of hands has anybody here heard about product sense show of hands you can just use the reaction show of hands product sense nobody all right good so product sense is one uh aspect you barely ever see in any textbook but it's so 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 important for being a successful imagine remember i said again emphasis is on success product sense is something that many people learn as along the way but many times it comes with experience as well that's why you see for some roles they'll say have five years of experience it's not because they're trying to seed people out because they but they know that if you spent about five years in products you'd have developed product sense but even as a new product manager you can actively seek to develop product sense so that even in your first or second year you can be trusted that when you speak when you do your work people can tell that you have product sense so product sense is being able to craft products right in if in a way that it also has the intended result on users so product sense is not about following documentation you know um writing user stories um coordinating engineering those things are great those things are fine those things are those things are aspects that you cannot do without those are operational aspects of the role right but that does not mean that you are building a product that has an impact on users. So I, I listed two parts of product sense that are very important. So that's empathy and creativity. Now, empathy now, I'm not talking about empathy as regards human relationship in the, in the workplace. We'll, we'll get to that. I'm talking about empathy as regards interacting with people's interaction with your products, right? So some ways to grow your product sense is watching people interacting with your products. Right. Sometimes you want to go out and just ask a stranger to try the product. I had a very interesting experience last week. Right. So my company is a football company. Uh, so we provide uh, um, interactions for football fans. And during the Afcon, one of the, one of the agents at the place was trying to get two ladies to onboard on the platform, and they didn't know that I was the product manager on that. So I was sitting behind and just watching them, and I'm like, oh my god, I could see some gaps in the products that they could not see, and I'm like, oh, we need to fix that, right? It's different from you as a, as as a staff, or as a, as a staff, the product don't cast in your eyes, right? You've used it many times, you've iterated so many times, you're you're so used to it, right? So you want to observe everyday people using your products. You also want to deconstruct everyday products. So it doesn't even have to be products in your field. Like sometimes you can just review how WhatsApp works. Why is WhatsApp so easy to use? Why is Instagram so scrollable? Why do I stay on Instagram for 30 minutes when I only wanted to come and check one thing, right? So you want to be able to do that. And by that, you're building your product acumen, right? Another thing is again, you want to improve your productivity. Sorry, your creativity, right? 
one way to increase your creativity is by listening, right? You guys listen to podcasts. There are so many product podcasts out there. They don't have to be boring. You can plug your ears when you're at work and just listen, right? You are, you want to stay in a space so long that you soak in some of the aspects and indirectly you start to pick pick things, right? If you are a product person and you, you, you definitely have to work with engineers, you have to work with designers, right? So sometimes, you, even when you're watching Instagram and stuff, or you, when you see all this design stuff, look at the aspects of it that make sense. When you look at billboards, look at how things are being placed so that when you are reviewing with your product designer or your engineer, you can be able to say, oh, this doesn't look right, this doesn't work well, even if you do not have a UX certificate or, an, a, or a technical background, right? Then you also want to be curious about changes in technology, right? Doesn't mean that you have to get all the degrees, like I said before, but what are the new things in your field? In what ways can you incorporate AI into your work? So these things are what increases your product sense. All right, I think we're good with that. Um, moving on to the next slide. Uh oh, I mean the rock slide. Okay. So I have this ABC here. So for you people to take home, I just put it here so that you can. It's it's snappable. The ABC as a product manager is always be curious, always be curious, always be curious. Product managers ask the best questions. If I sit in any presentation, if I sit in any room, I always have a question. There should always be a question. You want to ask why, 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 why? Even if a question, look for a question with a why. Once you ask a question with a why, you are starting to research. You're starting to become investigative. You're focusing on your thinking cap. Right? Why that color? Why this uh, font? Right? Why this decision? How do you do this? How, so always be curious. Always be curious. One major problem that many product managers have is because many of us do not have a technical background, right? Many of us don't have a technical background and you have to work with engineers. If you are not curious and you work with engineers, you cannot win as a product manager. That is the truth. If you are a scholar, and you can go and learn technical stuff, good and fine for you. You might be able to interact with them better. When they tell you this thing will take three days, you can it's easy for you to say, oh no, no, uh, -uh. What, what are you, what do you think? This thing won't take you two hours now. You can you 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 understand the process, right? But if you do not and you are smart like me, you'll be curious. I call my engineers all the time when they try to speak technical jargon, jargon. Maybe I don't want to embarrass you on the call, so I let you talk. <laughs> After the call, I'm going to call you, I'll say there I come. Explain this thing to me like I'm five. Explain this thing to me like I'm seven. Remove all the all those English that you're speaking. Take it away. Explain it to me like I'm five. Sometimes it means that you might sit down on engineering calls and just keep quiet. Be a fly on the wall. Be a fly on the wall. So curiosity is a part of product management that you can't take away as uh, uh, to be a successful product manager. And it's also important because someone said it. I think when Tega was explaining product management he he you could tell that he was going from one unit to another one department to another one one uh aspect of the company to another and that's because product managers are expected to be everywhere all at once right and you don't want to kill yourself right so one of the ways to to know a lot is to be curious right humble but curious okay let's move this is something that you might be familiar with but i'll just deep in on it a bit more successful product managers have undeniable soft skills undeniable soft skills so in your resume you will put <laughs> i heard this thing somewhere i was just laughing in your resume you put ah, uh skills communication skills time management see here yeah, if you decide to be a product manager you will know if you have soft skills you will know it's not like any other um profession where you see things and you might not have the opportunity to know if you have those things. If you are a product manager, you will know clearly for a fact whether you have soft skills or not. And I like the fact that they are, they are called um, skills. Because when you say something is a skill, it means it can be learned. So even if you do not have some of these skills, it's not a death sentence, right? It's something that you can cultivate, right? But it is undeniable. If you do not have it, you will struggle, right? One is people management. And I'm not saying you can be an introvert and not be successful, but you have to be a people person, whether you form it, 
whether you pretend to be, I don't know how you want to do it, though, but you have to be a people person. And that's because as a product manager, you are expected to, net, to relate upwards. So upwards is relationship with your supervisors. Downwards is relationship with your subordinates. Sideways is relationship with your counterparts, right? So take it, let's take an example of upward people management. Let's say your boss wants you to add a particular feature. Let's say your boss went to Abuja and he spoke with one governor and the governor said, ah, I want your product maybe to do ABC. But your product was built for X, Y, Z. And your boss comes and says, oh, oh yeah, oh, um, for me, we're building this thing. I want it in two weeks. You have to be able to tell your boss that, sir, as long as, as, as much as this thing that you said makes sense, <laughs> politely it doesn't really make sense because it's out of our scope it's out of our audience it's out of our uh, reach right so how do you how do you manage that how are you able to relate with your bosses to even let them know when something doesn't make sense without cowering and doing orgocentric product building downwards how do you relate with your subordinates without them feeling that you're you're too bossy or without them feeling that you're a walkover Right, many product people are walkovers. People don't, people don't, don't send them. People don't respect them because they are always begging, right? And a lot, I know a lot of product managers that walk by begging. Please now, help me give you that document. Please now, yeah, I mean, please, I'm begging you. Please, I'm begging you. People don't respect people that beg. That's just the truth, right? Sideways with your peers, with your peers. How do you relate with your peers? These are what people. These are the, the skills that make people know whether you are going to be a successful person or not, right? Relationship management. Relationship management is your relationship with clients, right? Every product person is expected to also understand sales, right? Even if you've run away from sales roles, many of us don't like to sell. If you've chosen to become a product manager, you are automatically involved in sales. So sometimes you're going to have to talk to customers. Sometimes you're going to have to talk to clients. And if you are also responsible for building the business model or the pricing of the product, you also have to be the biggest cheerleader for your products, right? So relationship management is there. All right, so that we don't waste time, let's move on quickly. Um, clear and clear written and verbal communication. Written and verbal communication. If you are a shy person, I'm sorry, take that shyness in your hand, squeeze it very well, squeeze it tight, yeah? And then look for it, dustbin and just throw it inside. Shyness and product management success do not go. Like I said before, these tips are not how to become a product manager. You can decide not to take the advice and you would still become a product manager. But emphasis here is on successful, right? You must be able to speak to people in such a way that they listen to you. And if you're a shy person or if you let your shyness show, right, it doesn't come out. Let me just tell you guys something. 90% of people in the world are shy. Most people are born shy. Not everybody likes to be in the spotlight. Not everybody likes to speak up. But if your job entails that you have to, you must be diligent enough to train yourself to speak irrespective of your timidity or your shyness. And like we said, it's a skill. The more you do it, the less you shy you feel. The more you learn tactics, the more you research, Google things, watch YouTube. How do I? do presentation? How do I speak well? How do I write well? As regards writing, many companies now do not allow presentation for internal stuff. So this fancy presentation I have now, this Canva and all this, this thing, it's useful when you're talking to external audiences, right? Or when you're making pictures or when you're talking externally. But when you're talking to your people inter internally, you need to be explicit enough without allowing things like fancy fonts or fancy images distract the presentation. So in my company, for example, only Microsoft, um, Word and Excel are used. We don't do presentations because presentations help you get away with the value and then you're just you know, saying some really, really nice things. So you must know how to write well, how to craft emails, how to, how to articulate yourself in writing and in speech, right? Just like I'm talking right now, product manager, managers talk a lot. We talk a lot because you have to be in so many meetings. You have to be able to communicate things across uh, 
multiple stakeholders, right? So how do you do that if you are not able to articulate yourself properly and verbally? Issues resolution is number three. Issue resolution. Problem will arise. <laughs> Problem will definitely arise, whether you like it or not. Even if you're working in the best. Oh, my camera is not on, my bad. Uh, that is not good etiquette for video calls. Check one second. Um, I forgot. That's not good etiquette for video calls. So let me just, okay. My eyes are right. <laughs> so, um, what are we doing? Issues resolution. Issues will come, issues will arise. There's nothing you can do about it. What makes the difference is your ability to resolve them. Now, as a product manager, you're going to have to resolve issues that are bigger than you and people that probably are, are superior to you. So it's like you're expected to lead, but you're not really given the mandate of leadership. Nobody's going to come and say, oh, you are now a leader. Automatically, you are a leader, even if people do not call you leader. The role expect and is dependent on you to lead, right? So it's like on, on, on delegated CEO, that's what you are, right? So how are you able to be diplomatic enough to solve issues when they arise? That's another skill you need to learn. Number four is what we call facilitation. Facilitation, I want you guys to write that down and take it home as a, an assignment, right? facilitation what does it mean to facilitate so facilitation is just just a tip on it while you guys go and research the rest when you're in meetings you need to be able to you need to be able to coordinate meetings in such a way that value is generated from them and then you manage people within those meetings so when you when you're when you're talking with people, for example, you're meeting with six people. One is from engineering, one is for marketing, one is for customer service. Everybody has an opinion. Everybody has an idea. Everybody wants to be the loudest in the room. The product manager must be the one to, you know, create an agenda, um, coordinate the session, and make sure that there's value extracted from it. So, facilitation skills are very important. I've seen people pay courses of over five hundred dollars just to learn facilitation alone. Right, but it's something that you can learn. This one is something that we all know. It's taught a lot for product managers. Time management, time management, and prioritization. Um, for non-product people on the call, for new product managers, time management is of the essence. Especially if you're working in an agile environment, right? You're working in a place where you're expected to churn out results quickly, right? You need to learn time management and prioritization. Um, a, a few courses can teach you some of the basics of it, right? How are you able to coordinate projects in a way that um, things do not stretch? When you're working in a technical company, from for, um, in a technical company mostly, right? You have instances where um, deliverables are, <laughs> are outstanding, right? And sometimes you just break down. Nobody's listening to you. God help you. You're not working in a remote company. Should be everybody's looking for remote remote role. Most product managers at the end of the day realize that remote room might be a scam. Because if it's a physical office now, I can go to my designer and um, to my engineer and I'll sit down here and I'll be like, okay, none of us are, none of us is going no more. You sit down here, sit down here. You're not going no more to finish my work. But if it's remote, what are you going to do? If I log off and I go, what are you going to do? Right? So as a product manager, you have to learn skills to help you prioritize, deal with people, manage time, right? and get results in the quickest time possible right uh, i'm sure from the courses at drips academy you will learn more about about that so i won't spend too much time on that and uh, last for soft skills here is integrity and honesty integrity and honesty please guys if anything here is not important for you take this one as a major take home you you need to be someone that people can trust you need to be someone that people can trust. Let your yes be yes, let your no be no. I know that sometimes you might be pressed in meetings and you're expected to, you want to make it look like something is done when it's not really done, right? But when people cannot trust your word, you tell them that this thing, this, this project should be ready in two weeks. It's been a month, it's been a month. So how, how are we supposed to trust you with bigger things? How are we supposed to know that? How are we supposed to take your word for it, right? Integrity is of the essence, please. Honesty, 
is of the essence to become a successful product manager. Um, yeah, I said it before, I was going to come back to emotional intelligence. Um, if you have questions, you can drop it in the chat or you can hold them to the end, but it's very important we have questions and I'll, I'm sure we'll have time for that. I think I have about 20 minutes left. To become a successful product manager, emotional intelligence is, <laughs> is a hundred, right? That's why all the soft skills here are dependent on this. That's why I said there's some things that you can read in textbooks. There are some things that you can watch on YouTube, some things that you will learn in school, but it's not everything that you can learn. Some are skills that you have to develop all by yourself and on your own. And I, I, I put this as a tweet one day and I'm like, um, uh, product management. Hmm. <laughs> you will know if you're successful. If you you will know if you're when a product manager, you just know. You have to know how to lead without being bossy. If you're bossy, people will like you. If you cannot lead, people will ride you. So it's it, it's like a dance, right? You know how you have to know how to lead without being bossy. You have to know how to have your way without being manipulative, right? You don't want to be a manipulative person, honestly. But you have to know how to get your way, right? You have to know how to appeal. I put beg in brackets because sometimes it's borderline begging. It's like, guy, you need to help yourself here, guy. You know, but you know you have to know how to do it without looking immature, right? I know I sound contradictory, but if you know, you know. <laughs> you have to know how to convince without being pushy, right? These are the diplomatic skills, right? And um. It, it, might, it might help to learn diplomacy. These are skills that politicians use. These are skills that presidents in their campaigns use. If anybody has run for any party or program before, you understand what we mean. You have to not appeal to different people at the same time, give win-win situation to everyone. Someone tells you um, to build this, it's going to take two weeks. And I'm like, guy, this needs to be ready in five days. And then you say, okay, let me see the code. Okay, what's going on right now? You, 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 you have conversations with them. I'm like, okay, you said 14 days. I want five days. How about we meet at 10, right? On the five, fifth day, we have a review. And I will see where you honestly are at. And then on the seventh day, we come back again. And we, and we, and we share shit. If you need help, let me know. I'm willing to help. Let's try and see if we can meet it by 10, right? So now you're, you're understanding the person's party. And then you're... So that's what I said. It's like a fine dance and... Nobody can really teach you because this this particular part is very situational. So it differs by, by, by the situation. But you have to know how to have a fine dance with people and still be mature. You have to know how to convince without being pushy. You have to know how to influence, right? Every product manager is an influencer. You're an influencer without being fake. If you are fake, people can spot it. But you have to know how to influence got it if you guys got it let me let me see your thumbs up or um let's get an emoji let me just know that um okay cool 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 cool, cool. that's good to see all right let's let's move on successful pms are customer obsessed customer obsessed again my emphasis is on successful right customer obsessed right you are the voice of your customer within the organization and you are the voice of your organization outside right and this is a very very good tactic to keep your internal stakeholders in check because many times your internal stakeholders want to do things that look right to themselves this is a very very good tactic for product managers that have orgacentric product management in their company. I don't know if anybody has heard of Oga Century before, where your boss will come and say, we oh, yeah, have build that, we oh, yeah, have launch that, we oh, yeah, do this. It's like, guy, this is not what the customer wants. It's not, this is not what the customer is saying, right? And if you're able to say that and prove it, your, your, your work as a product manager is going to be much, much, much easier because you're speaking according to what the people you're building for want. Right. Number one is if you ever did user research, I know you guys have learned if you're in Jupiter Academy or you, you're in any other academy, you would have learned about user research. It's one of the first things you learn. But one thing that I don't know if it's being taught a lot is that user research never ends. It's not something you do when you're about to start building a product. No, it's something you do almost every other day. It's something you do 
period in fact for good product people it's good to set it's good to set a time maybe you say every month or by monthly that you do another set of user research you need to talk to your users directly talking to users is not a customer success thing alone i'm sorry you need to talk to your customers one-on-one -on -one. sometimes set up face-to-face -face interviews go to where they are if you have a physical product go to people that are buying those products or you can do google form right and send it to, to your on your whatsapp group or whatever right or you can ask people to come to your office ask your company for some petty cash to bring people over so you can talk to them you have to talk to them directly you think about face-to-face -face interviews is apart from getting their responses you can see their you can see their facial expressions you can see when they laugh you can see when they frown right so yeah go to where your users are go to where your users are if your users are on facebook don't say because facebook is boring you are not on facebook get a facebook account and go there if your users are in a particular community join the communities right if your users go to certain places go there right go there you can't build for yourself and this is a very very common problem with startups it's said that when many many people build their startups they build for the experts that worked on them and not the market some people even uh, con con though um sorry excuse me they'll consult kpmg or deloitte or pwc to come and consult for your products come and do market research for them and at the end of the day they realize that what you debut they built it for experts because the experts that you know contributed to the products and then the new users in the marketplace do not understand the grammar that they're speaking right so again watch them with your products now we have so, so many technology that can help you research qualitative data tools right there's smart look there's microsoft clarity there is hotjar right watch your users interacting with your products listen to their triumphs and pain points you have to listen please you have to listen. people like to talk in our generation everybody likes to put their say their opinion and it's fine but you must listen we talked about integrity before so keep your word if you promise your users you are going to develop xyz do it and if you're not going to do it let them know one thing that people have, have not realized in our generation is that users like when you're honest with them if your product is trashy and you come and say hi guys we know our product is trashy but we're working on it they will love you i'm telling you i'm telling you it's better than saying oh we are the best you are the best you are the best and everybody is dragging you on twitter but tomorrow you're still going to pay your designer to come and do ads that says we are the best you're not the best everybody can see you're not the best so people like honesty and that's why people here be honest guys we know that we had a bug yesterday we're working on it please give us some time please give us some time we're new we're you know honesty um this is one of my favorite tips for product managers. My time is almost up. Oh, I wish I could. I have to I have to run now. So successful product managers know how to specialize. I'm going to spend time on this particular one because it's, I know it's going to help one or two people in this place. Product management is too wide for you. I'm talking to you in particular. The person that thinks I'm not talking to them is you I'm talking to. It's too wide for you not to specialize, right? I don't know if you guys have seen a DJDs for product managers. You must know how to design. You must know how to do research. You must know how to do tech. You must know how to code. You must know how to do UX. You must understand marketing. You must understand sales. Let me just tell you guys something here. When people send out ads for product managers, they're looking for someone that will come and solve all their problems. Yeah, the company has plenty of problems. They're looking for escape goods. Let me just put it like that. So if customer success is not working, where is product manager? If this one is not working, where is product manager? So the only way to save yourself and not get burned out or not feel like you're lacking something or not feel imposter syndrome or not feel um, stifled, right, is this second point here that says, know a bit of everything, but have an area of focus have an area of focus this will also help you when you are interviewing when you're interviewing is very it happened to me particularly in my last role was for a product manager but 
I redirected my interview in such a way that my boss knew exactly where I could give the most value to the company. And I even negotiated my JD to bend to what was my primary focus, which was growth, right? So in my mind is, see, you can get another product manager that can do, build everything for you and do the award. And I can tell you that that person will never transform your, your company the way I can because my specialty is in growth, right? That way, the company knows where to get the most from you because most companies don't even know what they want, to be honest, or they do not understand their exact pain point. So sometimes in your interview, you can start to interview the interviewer and be like, okay, so what is most important for you at this time? And based on what is most important for them, you can bend that way and drill into it instead of being the person that touch and go here, touch and go here, touch and go there, touch and go there, right? And the more you specialize, the more you grow, right? In the, in the entry level, Product managers are expected to do everything, but the more you go up, the more you specialize. So you see some people asking for technical product managers or growth product managers or um, general product managers, right? So once you specialize, own your space, own it, own it, own it, research on it, write about it, drill into it, become an expert at it. Keep up to date with the tools, trends for your specialty. Okay, let's run. Um, Successful product managers are data driven. My first point here, I want you to write this in your book, I write it in capital letter. Resist the urge to run on vibes. Resist the urge to run on vibes. Run on vibes. <laughs> Many people, if you're working in a startup, they run on vibes. They will see one problem. Ah, you guys, let us start this marketing campaign. Let's go there. We'll get 1,000 users. We'll just, we'll just post everybody's brain. And then everybody leaves the work of everything that they're doing and they start going to a different direction. And then halfway, like maybe in a month time, they'll be like, ah, why is everything just so confusing? What are we doing? That's our last month. We did this one, we dropped it. This one, we did this one, we dropped that. You are just running on vibes. And most of the time, this vibes eh, comes from the yoga, the person that has the vision for the company. It will just come one day and say, let's let's build this thing that will just blow everybody's mind so as a product person you are the one that brings everybody down to earth and the one that brings everybody down to earth and you can't do that without data because human beings can lie but data doesn't lie and this is where i will say document 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 because data doesn't lie okay sir you want to spend five million around this campaign but the last time we spent 500,000 naira, we had only five new users. So if you do that math, what is the cost per acquisition? It doesn't make sense. How about we do this? This worked the other time. We only spent 100K. We got 15 new users. How about we double down on that? If you keep data in your head, your brain has hormones. Your brain has... Um, your brain has communication neurons that alters reality. Your brain alters reality. So even if you sabi, no matter how smart you are, if you store information in your brain, your brain starts to impute other variables that bends the reality. So, but data doesn't lie. Data doesn't lie. So rely more on data and be the one that brings your company down to earth. When you're using data, you have to blend qualitative, quantitative data with qualitative data. So quantitative data, for example, will be like the numbers, right? The things I said about um, your numbers, your cost per acquisition, your, your revenue, your um, all those numbers, right? Um, if you have a data analyst, good for you. If you don't, there are many tools now out there that are no-code tools that can help you, or you can learn a bit of data stuff a bit of power query or bar bi or whatever or you can get an engineer um that understands sql to help you get some data from the back end from the database right but you as well there are many tools you can use there's mixed panel there's there's so many of them right let's not go into that that you can use to get data your engineer can help you with um code to put into your user journey on the product and then you just get the data from those no code tools qualitative data as well so when you're in meetings, be the one that says, okay, guys, once a week, I want us to look at the data. Once a week, I want us to review data. So maybe every Monday morning, 
say, okay, guys, let's look at our numbers. Let's see how we're doing. Is it for me coming to your engineers and saying, guys, we're not making any money now. Do you want them to fire us? Everybody can see because you're keeping everybody accountable with data. Um, so great product managers trust their guts, which is why we talked about product sense, but they also follow the evidence, right? Okay, let's run. So another question for you guys. What do the CEOs of YouTube, Slack, Notion, and Google have in common? What do the CEOs of, does anybody know? I, I'm just seeing the comments, okay. Nobody knows, okay. So the CEOs of all these companies, were once the product managers of their company of the company this is very interesting news actually because before now i hope you guys know that product management is a was one of the newest roles in the world you can't compare product management to like medicine or accounting that have been existing for generations so these ceos were once product people and before now ceos were expected to have like an in-depth body of knowledge. So most times, most companies uh, employ their chief technology officer or financial officer or operations officer as CEO. But it's interesting to know that people are starting to take products so seriously that these Fortune 500 companies, many of them now are selecting their product lead or their product officer or, yeah, their product engineers as CEOs. I want you guys to know this, that it's possible if you're an ambitious person, that's why we're talking about success here, you can achieve that with the train of product management, right? And this is where leadership comes in. And that's why I want you to guys take everything we're discussing here very, very importantly, right? Um, it's possible for you to lead a very, very, very big company, even as big as Google, from product management. So I think I'm done with all the major uh, learnings. I just have a few tips and then we call it a day. And I'll take that within the next five minutes. Okay. Number one, please, guys. If you're a product manager here, ship, ship, ship. Ship, ship, ship. So shipping means taking your product to market. You can be the best product management manager in the world, but if your product is still in development stage since, since, Nobody's going to rate you. Nobody's going to rate you. And that's why I'll say ship, ship, ship. There's a common problem in many companies where the product is never perfect in your eyes. It's never perfect in your eyes. There's always a bug somewhere. There's always a, a place somewhere that something that just annoys everybody. And because of that, you keep making changes, making changes, making changes. Please ship. You're not the one that will say this problem is a problem. It's not your right to say a problem is a problem because you're not building for yourself. This is like deliverance for somebody here because it delivered me. <laughs> ship, ship, ship. It's okay to tell your users this is version one. It's, I don't know if people want to build and they want to be they want to be in the same level as a competitor that has launched two years ago. You are new, own it, you are new. Put your trashy products in the market. Let people give you feedback, work on their feedback, and then release, release, release. It's better to release five times in a year than to release once in a year, and then you are doing things according to your own self, and then you're just going backwards. So please ship. The other advice I have is, okay, yeah, tips for career growth. So I'm just for tips for your career growth personally, um, and tips that also help me personally. Network within your industry. Product management is a very highly network-based role. Uh, I'm not even talking about networking the entire company or like even if it's attending events, being part of organizations like this, joining communities. You need to know people, right? Especially if you are still seeking employment. If you're waiting for LinkedIn to give you a job, <laughs> as a product person, you sleep there because in almost every product community, there are about a thousand people. So multiply that to every new cohort that comes in every, I know someone, somebody has in tech for them, I know there are over a hundred product managers in that, in that program. So if you're waiting for LinkedIn to give you a job, you sleep there. 
you need to know people and you need to let people know your goals let them know you're ambitious let people know that you're an ambitious person it's fine even your boss in your company let them know you're ambitious guy i'm good afternoon sir i just wanted to know that i'm taking a course to become a better product manager i want you to know that i'm, I'm taking a data course so very soon i'll be giving you guys more data insights i want you guys to know that i'm taking a marketing course i want you guys to know i'm learning about ai right so network within your industry let people know you're ambitious build your personal brand before now building a personal brand was a selfish thing it was like oh i want to be popular and famous now it's not optional how will people know what you're doing if you're not letting them know what you're doing i like that elizabeth said she, she found me on linkedin okay my time is up so i'll just brush over this build your personal brand seek mentorship seek guidance right pursue relevant certifications but do not wait for certifications before you start to explore things people like to run away from work on that school and i've done it before too where you run away and say oh i'm going to take another course because what delay you want to go and delay your work no as you are pursuing certifications seek ways to get experience right but still it's very important for you to make education your priority when you are younger a parents are, would want be the ones saying oh go to school by the time you are older you're the one parenting yourself and you have to be the ones keep yourself accountable and we've gotten to the end yeah thank you for the time it's been 45 minutes thank you so much everyone um I think we can take questions.